And the people of God said, God bless every one of you. And reward your faithfulness to him every time you come. He knows the sacrifice and he knows all we're going through. He will reward your service in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today for this period. Thank you for your children, your servants, our leaders. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your blessing will abide upon their faithfulness in Jesus' name. Help us to understand the scriptures, apply it to our lives, and then help other people to understand so that they will escape the judgment of God in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're coming to Revelation chapter 20. And we're reading and studying and learning from verse 11 all through to verse 15. Please open your Bible. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And then in verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Tonight we're considering this passage and we're having the topic, the great inescapable judgment of sinners in every generation. Notice that, sinners in every generation. What does that mean? It means from the time of the creation of man until the time of the flood, until the time of Exodus, until the time of the children of Israel in Canaan, until the time of the kings and the prophets, until the time of the New Testament, New Dispensation, until the time of the coming of the Lord, until the time of the great white throne judgment, that means from the beginning to the very end, in every generation, all sinners will appear before God. There will be the great white throne judgment. Let's understand. Today, when somebody dies, the body is on earth, and the spirit and the soul, if it's a believer, the spirit goes to God. That's why Stephen said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. We are sad, we are sorrowful, we cry, we mourn. When a beloved person, brother or sister or daughter or son or father or mother dies, we know they die in the Lord. We see their dead body here, but their soul, their spirit, goes to God. The sinner who dies unconverted, unsaved, when he dies, the spirit and the soul will go to the place of punishment referred to by the Lord as hell. 
and he gave us the story of the rich man that died and went to hell but the body is here on earth and the body is buried what we're looking at here in the great white throne judgment is that the sea when somebody had drowned will give up the body that was drowned and all the people that had died on earth they were buried the earth will spill them out and all their cells and parts of their body complete will come but the body without the spirit is still dead so that spirit that had gone to hell if that person is an unbeliever that spirit will join with the body and it now says, as the complete man, death cancelled, hell, hellfire emptied, and hell and the death are cast into the lake of fire. And then the complete man, if he's a sinner, is judged according to the works he had done on earth. And then he goes to hell forever. For the believer, when the day of resurrection comes, the body will rise from the grave, will rise from the earth. The spirit had been with God when Lazarus died. That soul was in Abraham's bosom. And when Stephen died, his soul, his spirit was with the Lord. On the day of resurrection, the spirit the soul will be joined with the resurrected body. Together, the complete man will now be in heaven forever and ever. And so, we need to make that clear in our understanding. You have a loved one who has passed on to glory. They are already in the presence of God and the Lord is taking care. So, don't let us be sorrowful beyond uh, you know, beyond limit. Today, the great inescapable judgment of sinners in every generation. Three points we're looking at. Number one, the great incorruptible judge of sinners in every generation. God is the great judge and he's not going to hand that over to anyone is the great judge and is incorruptible and he judges all sinners that ever lived here on earth point number two god's impartial judgment of small and great god's impartial judgment of not just some classes of people the small and the great the young and the old, the little ones and the very aged ones. God is the impartial judge. Number three is the glorious infinite joy of saints in glory. The joy we will have, the gladness we'll have, the happiness we'll have, the excitement that we knew the Lord and we followed the Lord all the days of our lives. No more sorrow, no more tears, no more crying. Heaven is a place of joy. Number one now. Number one, the great incorruptible judge of sinners in every generation. Revelation chapter 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth the whole earth and the heaven the sky fled away and there was found no place for them verse 13 in verse 13 and the sea gave up the dead which wine each since the beginning of creation all those who are drowned the sinner will give them up and death and hell delivered the dead which were in them all the people that had died and death holding them the grave holding them all of them will be released from death and hell and 
they were judged. Now, if they were carcasses, corpse, you can't judge them. But now, the spirit has reunited with the body. And the spirit united with the body, they are now judged according to their works. Now, we're looking at Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 9. There is a judgment that will come for the whole world, for all the generations of men and women. It's not strange in Scripture. It says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9, I beheld that the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days, that's a great God, the creator of all things and of all men, the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was like the fairy flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Then in verse 10, and a fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and judgment was set, and the books were opened. As we learn about the great incorruptible judge of all sinners in every generation, we're looking at three things. Number one, the impeccable judgment seat of God. Number two, the irreversible judge's sentence of the guilty. Number three, the innocent justifying substitute with grace. Look at number one there. The impeccable judgment seat of God. We've read already Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 and 13. We read Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That seat of Christ is impeccable and the judgment seat of god is impeccable white pure righteous no evil and no misplacing of judgment and we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body the spirit cannot act without the body the soul cannot express itself without the body all the thoughts we may have cannot come to expression without the members of the body and so when it says to receive the things done in his body that means our thoughts expressed through our body our mind our decision our direction and anything we did that we express through the body will be judged according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11, it says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, judgment is coming, God is impartial, God is incorruptible, he cannot be bribed. And we cannot withhold any information from him. He knows everything. And then it says we're going to that impeccable, righteous judgment seat of God to appear before him. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also I made manifest in your consciences. Psalm 96, I'm reading from verse 10. In Psalm 96, verse 10, say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people. Tell the heathen judgment will come. Tell the pagans, 
don't make you come. Tell the sinners, don't make you come. Tell everyone, everywhere, the people that are living as if there's no reckoning day. The people who are living as if there be no judgment and they're heathens. And if you tell them, they say, well, I'm not a Christian. He's not going to judge the church goers. He's going to judge the heathen. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth and that he shall judge the people righteously. In verse 11, he tells us, let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Verse 12, it says the field be joyful and all that is said therein then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice, but that in now before the Lord, for he, the Lord, cometh, and he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge. Let everyone know, and you yourself be conscious of that, that whatever we do is the silent listener to every conversation is the quiet observer of every action and he is the recorder of everything that is done he has the book of life and he has books of record where he records everything that is done and he will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Let's come to number two here. Number two is the irreversible judge's sentence of the guilty. Actually, the word of God says that the whole world is guilty before him. And it leaves all the things that makes the world guilty in Romans chapter 3 from verse 10 all through to verse 19. Now, if that guilt has not been resolved, if that guilt has not been erased, if that guilt has not been blotted out before a person dies, repenting of sin and coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, if that has not been settled, judgment will come and the judgment will be according to all that he has done in Genesis chapter 18 verse 25 it says that he that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked no he cannot slay the righteous with the wicked he is a righteous judge he is a holy judge. He is a person that will look at what thoughts and actions and behavior and whether we believe or not is going to look at everything. That be far from thee to slay the righteous with the wicked. That the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Look at this now shall not the judge of all the earth the judge of all the earth is not just the judge of a section of society it's not just the judge of israel it's not just the judge of a localized nation localized group of people he is the judge of all the earth shall not the judge of all the earth do right psalm 9 reading from verse 8 in psalm 9 verse 8 and he shall judge the world the world the whole world of every generation he shall judge the world in righteousness he shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness nobody will be able to accuse god no i didn't do that no that's not me you know sometimes in the world they misplace judgment but in the case of god nobody will accuse him that he misplaced judgment because he knew everything he knows everything and everything is on record that's why it says in verse 17 it says the wicked shall be turned into hell the wicked shall be turned into hell there are people that will say that hell always means the grave 
always means the burial ground, the cemetery. When uh, the Bible says somebody will go to hell, that means he goes to the grave. But look at this, the wicked, only the wicked, the righteous, too, when they die, they go to the grave. But he's talking about hellfire, a place of punishment. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. Amos chapter 3, we're looking at verse 2. In Amos chapter 3, verse 2, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. I know you, I recognize you, I brought you out of Egypt, and you only have not dealt with any other nation as I've dealt with you, and yet I will punish you for all your iniquities. It tells us in verse 3, it says, can't you work together except they be agreed? And then in verse 4, it says, will the lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Then in verse 8, it tells us the lion has roared. Who will not fear? And then it says, the Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Amos, the prophet, is telling us, when God has revealed something, we have to proclaim it. We cannot say, well, we only talk about grace. We only talk about mercy. We only talk about compassion. We only talk about love. We don't talk about judgment. The Lord has revealed and the Lord has proclaimed and the Lord has spoken. And the prophet, the preacher, the pastor, the minister must prophesy, must proclaim. Acts chapter 17, reading from verse 30. It says, and the times of this, ignorance God wink at but now commanded all men everywhere all men everywhere to repent why apostle what if some people don't repent any consequence to that look at verse 31 because all men everywhere should repent because all men should think of their lives and look at their lives and turn away from evil. Why? Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, by Jesus Christ whom he has ordained, by the world by the preaching, by the sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the declaration, by the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Let's look at number three there. Number three is the innocent justifying substitute with grace. We're talking about the judgment to come. But for everyone that is still alive, we don't have to wait for that day. We can have our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the innocent substitute. It's the one that is full of grace and full of truth. It's the one that brought the grace that can save us and change us. He has taken our punishment already. He is our substitute. If we will turn away from our sin and believe on him, he will have mercy on us. Look at the fact that Jesus Christ, even though he died, he didn't die for his own sin. He was innocent. Matthew chapter 27, I'm reading from verse 4, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Judas Iscariot said, I know him. I lived with him. I moved around with him. I was a treasurer. And everything he did, everything he said, I am the sinner. I have betrayed innocent blood. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, when he, Pilate, was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing? To deal with that just man, just man, righteous, just, 
innocent for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him verse 24 in verse 24 when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that rather a tumult was made he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying I am innocent of the blood of this just person just person look at verse 46 in verse 46 and about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani that he is to say my God my God I'm innocent I am pure I am just, I am righteous, I've done all things to please you, and I am perfect. Why hast thou forsaken me? He was our substitute. He suffered for the sin he did not commit. He suffered for the sin we committed, and he bore our judgment. And everyone on earth, they can come and do themselves favor that Christ, the innocent, the righteous, died for me, and I believed in him. And then they will not come to judgment anymore. Isaiah chapter 53, reading from verse 6. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, all we like sheep, all we, everyone, there's no exception. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you see that sentence? All at the beginning. At the end, all. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the lord thinking of us is not interested is not having any joy or delight in condemning anyone in sending anyone to judgment in sending anyone to hellfire or in putting anybody in the lake of fire the lord has already laid the iniquity of us all on him all we need to do is come and believe and then instead of going to hell we'll go to heaven look at first peter chapter 3 verse 18 first peter chapter 3 verse 18 for christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust the righteous for the unrighteous the holy for the unholy that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit first John chapter 3 verse 5 it says and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins he came to take away the punishment of our sin he came to break the power of our sin he came to cleanse the pollution of our sin he came to eradicate the very presence of sin from our lives you know and that's why you believe you know that's why you are telling other people you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin look at verse 6 it says in verse 6 whosoever abideth in him that's like you come to christ you take cover under the atonement of christ and then you are purged you are pardoned you are purified by the cleansing blood of christ and you abide there day by day you abide you are not looking back at the old days of darkness and old days of defilement you are now looking unto the lord alone the author and the finisher of your faith whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth 
has not seen him, neither known him. Look at verse 7. Little children, young converts, and all members of the body of Christ, those who really know the Lord, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8 tells us, he that committeth sin is of the devil. He that committeth sin is allowing the devil to have unnecessary power over him. Is not giving enough chance, enough liberty, enough authority to the Lord, our substitute, our sacrifice, our Savior. But he is leaning more towards Satan that weakens him and then he cannot live the victorious life. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil, every sin initiated by Satan, generated by Satan, produced by Satan in every life, the Lord will destroy, cleanse away, remove in Jesus' name. In verse 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. And then in verse 10, in this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. He says, This is how you discover, and this is how you identify those who are children of God and children of the devil. Is the same question. If somebody is living by the grace of God and is overcoming sin, those are the children of God. If somebody is so powerless, it's not even making an effort to resist temptation or to resist the devil and is just living in sin, drinking sin, talking sin all the time, that's a child of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not is brother let's come to point number two now we have seen the judgment seat of god impeccable number two god's impartial judgment of small and great of small and great of small and great we're looking at revelation chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 12 Revelation chapter 20, reading from verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great. Underline those words, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. It says, books were opened one side another book opened book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works not according to their neighbors works according to their friends works according to their parents works each one small and great will stand before God and each one has records. All the people that have lived on earth from the beginning of the earth until this time of the great white throne judgment, everyone has record with God. He is God, he is infinite, he is eternal, and he has great wisdom that is beyond the wisdom of any Liberian, of any record keeper, and he keeps record of everything that everyone has done. And then it says in verse 13, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. When people die, they are bothered about how they are buried. 
And if they were drowned in the mighty ocean and they couldn't recover their body, people are sorrowful and safe. Look at that. Well, really, does it matter? Because on the final day, everyone who has died, it says the sea will give up even those who were in the sea. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man. Everyone that ever drowned in the sea from the beginning of the world until the end of the world, they were judged, everyone. Everyone that was born to ashes in fire, everyone that is cremated so in some cultures, when they die, they burn them up and they gather their ashes, so they throw their ashes into the sea. Everyone that has ever lived and died and they are not in the Lord and they didn't die in the Lord, it says they were judged every man according to their works. Remember once again, verse 12 mentions small and great. Three things here. Number one, the final reckoning day for unrepentant small and great unrepentant small and great number two the fearful retributive damnation for unconverted small and great number three the foremost responsive decision by unashamed small and great there is mercy and christ died on the cross of Calvary so that everyone will escape the judgment of God and small and great the foremost decision the first decision the priority of decisions is that we become unashamed of Christ unashamed of the Savior unashamed of giving ourselves to him and anywhere we are small or great young or old we are able to testify I belong to Christ because if we are ashamed of him here he'll be ashamed of us on the other side number one now is the final reckoning day for unrepentant small and great and let's look at revelation chapter 11 verse 18 revelation chapter 11 reading from verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they shall be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great there are people that do not um, walk or preach or plan or pray for the salvation of the younger people oh they said uh, they say they're still young and since they're young let them sow their wild oats now later when they become much older they will think and then they'll give their lives to the lord the lord can come at any time the record of activities of character of action of behavior by the young people and also by the older people everything is being recorded and then it said that thou shouldn't destroy them which destroy the earth chapter 19 reading from verse 18 that he may eat the flesh of the kings is talking to the birds of the air this at the time of battle against the lord and these people are conquered and defeated and now the lord is inviting the vultures and all the birds to come and eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of the horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both 
free and much, both small and great. The Lord is telling us and reminding us that His judgment covers everyone in every community, in every country, even the small and the great. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, reading from verse 1. That's why the Word of God is saying, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Don't say, I'm still young, I'm small, I don't need to repent now, I don't need to be converted now. After all, my parents, uh, they, they were old, my daddy told me he was converted at 43, my mommy told me she was converted at 39, and so I still have a lot of time, remember now. The creator in the days of the youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Look at verse 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, small and great, young and old, boys and girls, husband and wife, parents, fathers and mothers. Here is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man verse 14 it says for god shall bring every work into judgment small and great young and old still a student or a worker a professional everyone god shall bring every work the one that is done in private, the one that is done in the public, the one that is done contrary to the commandment of the Lord. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. With every secret thing. There are people that do things and they cover it up. And they have a covenant, blood covenant, or the people that have information, an idea about what that was done. If you ever reveal what I have done, or what you have done, or what we have done together, let this happen. And because of that devilish covenant, because of that covenant that will hinder them from repentance and then they go to hell forever they don't want to repent they say nobody will know i have covenant with those who know that they will not tell anything god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether each be evil. Let's come to number two there. Number two, there's the fearful retributive damnation for unconverted small and great. Always remember that. And I need to ask you, are your children, young children, are they born again? Primary school children and secondary school children, are they born again? Let me ask you a direct question. You have a school, even deeper life, we have deeper life, high school. Are we only teaching secular subjects so that they'll make good grades in all these various subjects and be able to compete favorably with, uh, you know, other children in other schools? Do we understand that those children that have come under our um, our tutorials, under our teaching, under our training, that they need salvation. They need to understand the word of salvation, the way of salvation, and they need to definitely and clearly give themselves to the Lord. Those in our university and those who are under us in the children church and in the youth section or campus, the small and the great. It says, and I saw in uh, Revelation chapter 20 verse 12, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according 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 to their works genesis chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 4 in genesis chapter 19 reading from verse 4 but 
before they lay down the, the men of the city even the men of Sodom compassed the house round both old and young when it says small and great what it means is young and old great and small old and young all the people from every quarter look at what he calls young and old look at verse 11 now in verse 11 and they smote the men that were at the door of the house were blinded both small and great in verse 4 he refers to them as young and old in verse 11 he refers to them as small and great and the judgment even the judgment of blinding them making them blind so they will not be able to hurt a lot and they'll not force themselves into the house that judgment came on small and great and then it says they wearied themselves to find the door now in verse 24 the judgment that came came upon young and old small and great then the lord reigned upon sodom and upon gomorrah brimstone and fire from the lord out of heaven do you notice that a verse at the beginning then the lord reigned upon sodom or the small and great or the young and old and then it says fire from the lord out of heaven for the small and the great for the young and for the old there is judgment in fact it's not just the earthly fire in jude chapter one reading from verse seven jude chapter one verse seven even as sodom and gomorrah or the young and old even as sodom and gomorrah or the uh, small and great and the cities round about in like manner giving themselves over to fornication the young and the old giving themselves over to fornication the small and the great giving themselves over to fornication and going at a strange flesh as set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire revelation chapter 13 verse 16 in revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and he cost all both small and great he cost all that's the antichrist when he comes after the church is ruptured and the church is gone then the antichrist will come and the beast will come and they will cause all both small and great rich and poor free and bound to receive the mark in their right hand and all in their foreheads the younger and the old you know that time they will say well i'm young I'm a young person, even though it might be dangerous for these older people uh, to receive the mark, but I'm small, I'm, I'm young. Look at chapter 14, verse 9. In chapter 14, verse 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, anyone, worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand verse 10 the same young or old the same small or great the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented young or old he shall be tormented great or small with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb in verse 11 it says and the smoke of their torment 
ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Number three, at this time now, we can still come to the Lord. We're learning about the future judgment so that before that future judgment strikes, we will then make a way to escape. And if there is anything we need to give priority to, if there is anything we need to make foremost, first and foremost in our life, it is this decision to be unashamed of the gospel unashamed of the salvation of the Lord, unashamed of believing in the Lord and living in the Lord and living for the Lord. The foremost responsive decision by unashamed, small and great. The gospel is for everyone, small and great. The real gospel, the true gospel, the full gospel, the saving gospel is not just, you know, telling a Bible story and the children and the young people enjoy the story, but from the story we tell them about the salvation of the Lord and give the gospel to them. And then when they experience that gospel, they go to their peers outside and they live out the life without shame. We're looking at Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 22. Acts 26, verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing to small and great. A witnessing to small and great. Or preaching the gospel to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say shall come. Verse 23, it says that Christ should suffer. He has suffered already. He died for us already. And that he should be the force that shall rise from the dead and shall show light unto the people, small and great, and to the Gentiles, old and young. And Paul was talking uh, not only to the great, not only to the small, to the old, to the young, to everyone. The soul of everyone matters in the sight of the Lord. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, then a griper uh, said unto Paul, almost that persuades me to be a Christian. Almost that persuades me to take a decision and to offer and to surrender my life to the Lord. And even though I'm on the throne, even though I'm a king, not to be ashamed. Almost you persuade me. Verse 29, then said Paul, and Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, both small and great, and both old and young, who are both almost and all together, such as I am, except these bounds. We're told in Second Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 8, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Timothy, you are younger than Paul, and this is for small and great. This is for the young and for the old. This is for those people who are just coming up in life, and they're not too old yet. You have your brain, you can think, and you have your mind, you can evaluate, and you have your senses, and you can tell that this is the watch of God, and heaven and earth may pass away, but the watch of the Lord shall not pass away. If anyone rejects the gospel if anyone is ashamed of the salvation of the Lord 
judgment will come and the judgment of the great and the small the same hellfire the same lake of fire and the judgment of those who are small those who are great those who are free those who are bound those who are poor and those who are rich the same judgment eternally for them that the reason Paul the apostle was telling Timothy and Paul the apostle is telling you be not thou therefore ashamed of the gospel of our Lord nor of me is prisoner but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God and then in verse 9 who has saved us salvation for Paul the older one salvation for Timothy the younger one salvation for the small and the great for the young and the old who has saved us and has called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to some purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began it tells us in Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 16 Romans chapter 1 verse 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ I Paul I an apostle I an older man and then the younger wants you and the small one should not be ashamed we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone small and great everyone young and old everyone boys and girls everyone the parents and the children to everyone that believeth to the Jew false and also to the Greek mark chapter 8 reading from verse 36 in Mark chapter 8 verse 36 it says what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul what shall it profit a young person a boy a girl if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul how also what shall it profit the father the mother the aged the older one what shall it profit the great the rich if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul and then in verse 37 it says so what shall a man give in exchange for his soul the soul of the small is as precious as the soul of the great the soul of the young is as is as precious as the soul of the older people and the soul of the small and the great will live forever and ever and ever either in hell or in heaven either with satan the devil or with god who is forever and ever to be alive what shall a man what shall a boy what shall a girl what shall a woman what shall a parent what shall the rich what shall anyone give in exchange for his soul verse 38 then says whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, whether small or great, whether young or old, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels we we'll come to point number three now point number three is the glorious infinite joy of saints in glory when we leave this realm of tears and sorrow 
when we leave this realm of uh, evil and sinfulness and then we go to the great beyond as people of God, as children of God, the glorious joy, the infinite joy, the unending joy, the everlasting joy that will be upon us as saints of God in glory. It tells us in Revelation chapter 20 verse 14, it says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. When you say the second death, the first death, that's the death of all people killed by death. Death is personified. And now he talks about the death of death. That death will not function anymore, will not operate anymore, and this is the second death. Death will be separated from all men that he cannot do evil anymore. Glory for the people who are in heaven. They will live forever because death is already cast into the lake of fire and death cannot kill anybody in heaven. And then the people who go to hell fire, death is not going to function, it's not going to kill them either because death has been put to death. And then in verse 15, it says that no so ever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire look at three things here as we're talking about the glorious infinite joy of saints in glory we're looking at number one the eternal satisfaction for our names in the book of life eternal joy eternal happiness eternal excitement eternal enjoyment of those who have their names written in the book of life number two the endless suffering the endless joylessness no joy in hell for missing from the book of life and number three the everlasting stage of all who are reaching in the book of life we're coming to number one there the eternal satisfaction for our names and the book of life in luke chapter 10 verse 20 here is the lord jesus christ talking to those 70 disciples that came back and he gave a great and wonderful a testimony as to what God did with them. And then Jesus said, yes, I beheld Satan. He fell as lightning from heaven. Then he said in verse 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What do you think? The joy of those people to have the assurance that Jesus Christ, who knows about the book of life and who knows the names that are written in the book of life, he told them openly and he told them publicly that you and you and you, you have been saved. This is evidence of true conversion that Jesus Christ assured them your names are written in heaven. And he said, rejoice because of that. How that shall bring joy to the twelve except Judas Iscariot. If the seventy who went out and came back, if their names were written in the book of life, how much more now Peter and John and James, the people that believe lived in him and said to whom shall we go we know that thou hast the word of eternal life the assurance that their names were written in the book of life look at this saying that you went out and you healed the sick that's good 
but the joy of that is not as much as if you know that your names are written in heaven you cast out devils that's great but you know joy of that is not as much as the joy that you know that you know that you know beyond any shadow of doubt that your name is written in heaven I will need to then temper our joy the sick is healed demons are cast out miracles happen we thank God for those sick and we need to tell those recipients of miracles that the greater miracle is that they are saved, they are born again their lives are turned around there's real transformation and the real cause of joy is that there is assurance they are saved and their names are written in heaven Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 in Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 he that will overcome it the same shall be clothed in white treatment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels Revelation chapter 21 looking at verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea then in verse 2 and I John the I saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from from God out of heaven prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband. Then in verse 3 it says, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people small and great and God himself shall be with them and be their God and then in verse 4 it says and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes small and great old and younger and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away then in verse 5 and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are the true are true and faithful verse 6 it says and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him whether boy or girl whether man or woman I give unto him whether small or great and whether young or old him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely and then in verse 7 and he that overcometh overcometh all temptations overcometh all trials and overcometh all tests of life we that overcometh overcometh the tendency to backslide he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son amen, amen. chapter 19 reading from verse 7 he tells us in chapter 19 verse 7 let us be glad small and great let us be glad those who are saved sanctified and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife and the bride has made herself ready and then in verse 8 it says and to her was granted that she should be arranged in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints then in verse 9 and he said to me right blessed are they young and old blessed are they small and great which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb and he saith unto me these are the true sayings of God I pray you'll be a partaker on that final day in Jesus name number two here is the endless suffering for missing from 
the book of life. Look at Revelation chapter 20 verse 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Verse 15 and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Look at that. Whosoever those who come to church they enjoyed the services they enjoyed the sermons, the messages, they enjoy the fellowship, they enjoy the blessings and the goodness of the saints of God, but they never think they should make a decision and give themselves to Christ and live for Christ. Whosoever was not found reaching in the books, they come to the church, they, are, they befriend the believers, we call them brother, we call them sister. They might even be involved in this area of work, this area of work, but they do not have assurance. They cannot tell you the date and the time and the how and the when they give their lives to the Lord. They, they still commit sin, but they are kind of comforting themselves. That's my weakness. That's my idiosyncrasy. That's my peculiarity. The sin in their office. The sin in their home. The sin publicly. People know them. They say, oh, but you are of this particular church. You said, yes, nobody is perfect. They have never given themselves to the Lord to be born again. They come to all the meetings. They might even claim this is my church. I will never go into any other church. I am here. I will die there. But they don't have the assurance their names are written in the book of life. If you confront them and you check them from them, tell me your experience, how you were born again, how the change came in your life. Tell me the definite, definite things that happened when you had salvation. They cannot tell. They do not have assurance of their names in the book of life and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire it tells us in exodus chapter 32 reading here from verse 33 exodus chapter 32 verse 33 the lord said unto moses the Lord said, the Lord who changes not, the Lord the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Lord the same in all generations said unto Moses, whosoever, whatever their title, whatever their position, whatever the name of their church, whatever money they have, whatever riches they have, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And when God has blotted somebody's name out of the book, if he's still, you know, carrying on activities, he's still, I'm here, I'm there, jumping here and jumping there without taking time off and go and settle with the Lord like Peter settled with the Lord. And he cried with bitter tears and the Lord received him and the Lord restored him and the Lord forgave him and he had once again the assurance that he belongs to me. He did not remain a perpetual backslider. There are some people, they have fallen, they refuse to rise up. They have sinned, they refuse to repent. And they have done evil, they refuse to retrace their steps. And the Lord said, whosoever whatever the name, whatever the title, whatever the position, whatever the recognition in the house of God, whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book that I have written. Revelation chapter 22, we're reading from verse 18, for I testify, there's the Lord Jesus Christ now saying, I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophet prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book verse 19 and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy 
The man reads uh, judgment, he says, no, I don't like that. That's negative. I'll never preach that. He takes the judgment of God away. It reads about conditional security that only those who abide and remain in the Lord shall be recognized on the final day to get to heaven. I don't like that one. What I like is eternal security. Everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, God is a loving God. You will still get to heaven. He removes from the word of God. The Lord said, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Those who think they are judges over the doctrines of the Bible. We remove restitution. We'll never talk about that again. We remove sanctification. It's not possible for anybody to be holy. We remove uh, one man, one wife. These are difficult days and divorces everywhere. And, you know, women are suffering. Men are suffering from their wives. And if you keep on saying that, some people will not want to come to church. If we want them to come, remove one man and one wife. And remove, uh, you know, all this evangelism and passionate about evangelism and going out and doing this remove all that well if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy god shall take away his part his name out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book i pray God will not have any cause, any reason to take your name away from the book of life in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought there would be thunderous, amen. amen. Number three now is the everlasting state of all reaching in the book of life. Everlasting state, your name is in the book of life. You'll be happy forever. You'll be joyful forever. You'll be blessed forever. And the glory of God will shine upon your life forever and ever in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 3. And I entreat thee also through your fellow help those women which labored with me in the gospel with clement also and with other fellow laborers look at this look at this you must understand paul the apostle was uh, highly favored by god he's been to the third heavens he's seen angels over there he's heard words that nobody else has heard in this generation and now he's revealing something to us he mentions the these people and he said whose names are written in the book of life whose names are in the book of life what assurance he gave to those people that they were not just uh, servants of God children of God daughters and sons of God they are people whose names were written in the book of life look at verse 4 this is cause for joy rejoice in the Lord always if your name is there you have cause to rejoice again I say rejoice we're looking at Luke chapter 6 verse 22 Luke chapter 6 verse 22 blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake verse 23 rejoice in that day and live for joy for behold your reward is great in heaven he's saying your name is in heaven you will get to heaven and then you'll have reward in heaven may that be your case in jesus name for in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets then we're told in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 rejoice evermore today you rejoice for the rest of your life as god is answering your prayer you will rejoice and then when you cross over to the other side no more tears no more suffering no more shame no more pain no more heartache 
You'll be rejoicing how long? Evermore, evermore, evermore. Let that joy begin in your life today. And evermore, God will give you cause to keep on rejoicing. Let's rise up now and take what we have learned to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us uh, from this uh, passage. And thank God our names are in the book of life. Let's receive to rejoice.